Hundred. You know that was just four. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you guys. So we're back with another topic video, and this time today's topic is parenting. <laughs> Gentle parenting. Gentle parenting. You guys. Okay. So you know, as black parents, black. A lot of times you're expected. <laughs> To use the rod to discipline the child. Use force. Use the belt. <laughs> use the whip. Man, that's scary. <laughs> but yes, you guys. So we want to just jump into what it was like for us. How, what, what we thought about discipline mm. before we even became parents. And then what it's been like now that we have a child. What disciplining has been like, you know, for us presently. <laughs> All right, let's jump in. Yeah, so I just wanted to start off with, it can seem easy to go into parenting, you know, just with the concept of it's going to be easy. I'm going to keep myself composed and simple, and the child will be composed, <laughs> but it doesn't turn out like that. Well, like, when you're about to be a parent, first of all, you're excited about just being a parent. Yeah. Some people are excited. Some people, they well, it's unexpected, so they're like, yeah, uh-uh. That's true. But yes, for us, we were really excited about becoming parents. We had talked a little bit about like whether or not we w would be like the type of parents that would beat our kids, or yeah. we didn't think too deeply about it. But I I knew that <laughs> what you knew we didn't want to beat our kids. Now here's the thing, you guys. Let me tell you what happened. What <laughs> we had the baby during that stage from zero to two. First of all, zero you're just to uh, you're just. <laughs> You're just like completely adoring this little person. You know what I mean? They're so yeah. cute. They can't even talk back yet. So they're not even like being disrespectful or anything like that. Some people have a different experience, they say, based on whether the child is a girl or a boy. Mm -hmm. But for us, Makai was like a perfect angel. He was a very calm baby. He calm was young Buddha. Little yeah, Buddha. and he <laughs> was. I mean, sometimes, like, okay, when it came to us getting him to do what we want, like, say if I needed to change his diaper, yeah. or say if you needed to change his diaper, those are always different. Like, I could get him to do it with, like, little tricks to where I made it fun, but Mark sometimes would struggle because, you know, ain't no baby trying to pay attention anyway, so you really got to you gotta think of different methods to kind of get what you want. Chill. <laughs> little Black. baby came out because he was hungry. Anyway. So yeah, a lot of times you have to kind of think of tips and little tricks. You gotta come up, you gotta get real creative when you want your baby to do what you want them to do because at, yeah. at, from zero to two, they don't really, they can listen, but a lot of times they're not at the right stage where they can really follow orders. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a theme too, just kind of being creative as a parent yeah. and adapting, that's what it is. You know, yeah. kind of just not being too rigid and stiff, but like yeah. working with your baby. And understanding that their basic communication is really like play and fun. Mm. So if you can make them, if you can make it fun, <laughs> then you can, you'll you save yourself a lot of headaches and a yes, lot of stress. That's because, true. but a lot of times parents, they, I mean, I you're already not, know parents. <laughs> I know parents that's like, I said what I said and I want what I want right now. No, and Not the time for games. And they <laughs> discipline their kids a little stricter and they feel like they still get what they want because they get an obedient child. Yeah. What we wanted to do was to... Lead with love. Lead with love and, and also just remember that it's about teaching yeah. versus punishing. You know what I mean? So if Makai yeah. ever did do anything where it was something that we didn't want him to do... We would have to kind of just talk to him. And a lot of times, a lot of parents think that talking doesn't take too long. Some parents will <laughs> pop their kid. And some parents will punish their kid. And uh, mm. who knows how many ways no that you patience. can punish a kid. Get some pops. <laughs> but here's what I noticed. I mean, I'm not saying that I never lost my own cool. You know what I mean? Sometimes, depending, if you're in a bad mood. Maybe some, once or twice. Yeah. You can lose your own cool and then, then you feel bad because maybe either A, you were too rough with your kid or you said something a little too aggressively. Mm. I think that's normal and like you shouldn't beat yourself up too much. But it's really yeah. about checking yourself because a kid will show you how, what you need to work on in yourself. Like we need to that's be able to truth. Yeah. control our own emotions. Yeah. So sometimes if I was like getting out of character, then I'm like, okay, 
I need to calm down because you got to really, you, it's hard to see it in perspective when you're in it. Hmm. Only in retrospect can you be like, oh, that wasn't even that serious. But in the moment yeah. when you want your kid to do exactly what you want, you're not really thinking clearly. Over, it was a, a transition, like subtle transitions for us. So we didn't have to be firm or really direct or disciplined, you know, very disciplined in the beginning. And it, like around three, three and a half, it started, it just came to us. Well, that's so, because Makai at zero, from zero to two, Makai was like, he didn't give chill. us no trouble. He didn't, yeah. he wasn't feisty. He wasn't sassy. <laughs> he wasn't like not listening. Like for the most part, like I felt like he, if anything, if he did anything, it was like just light stuff. It wasn't nothing that required <laughs> any like, no. you know, but then when he just started talking yeah, so, and he finally realized he could say no. Yeah. That, I think it's beautiful to allow a child to express and live and become a, you know, a human, yeah. you know, just growing. It's cool to do that. So you, as the adult, you got to check yourself, you know, just check in, you know, say, okay, what am I reacting to? You know, what am I, what am I responding to? Because really not too much things are serious. If it is, right. you know, handle it. But if it's not, just kind of take a, take a second. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> and when it's serious, sometimes you do have to be super firm. You have to be super strict because you don't want your kids to be in danger. But when it comes to certain things like... Say if you're like, say you want your kid <laughs> to hurry up and get dressed. Get dressed. You want your kids, you like, get dressed right now, stop playing. But it's like, <laughs> if they don't do it right now, this second, is the whole world going to end? Y'all like, yes! <laughs> but a lot of times, that's where we came in. And sometimes you just got to think, like, or it's not that serious. Oh, wait, these sirens out here. Somebody getting it. <laughs> <laughs> so every child's different, and each parent has to realize that their child... Just work with them, be more patient, and uh, be more lenient in the sense that they're learning. They're learning their right. emotions, how to express themselves, right. how to communicate. Just They're learning how patience. to be a person. Learn how to be a person. <laughs> and you know when you're a human being, <laughs> you got all these emotions, some emotions yeah. feel huge, and they're just trying to navigate that, and so... Process it. Yeah. The funny thing about parenting, though, is everybody's going to do what they feel is best, and... I could view another parent and be like, oh, that's horrible. <laughs> and a parent could look at us and be like, oh, they too gentle. <laughs> <laughs> too gentle. So, I mean, it's really interesting because a lot of times you got some parents, they, they think that their way is the best way. And they mm. think that their way would work for your kid. Mm. Okay, and I'm telling you right now, when I would get into those little moments where I wanted to be demanding from Makai and I wanted to just get him to be obedient, mm. he would be like the worst child <laughs> so it almost like me raising my voice and yelling it brought out the worst in him and and i realized that he was just gonna match my energy like if i yell he would yell louder and i'm like <laughs> and then i realized that like basically it's still all about setting an example so yeah. if you can remain calm i mean sometimes he'll have moments where he yells and i'm like makai am i yelling at you <laughs> But if I'm yelling, then I can't ask him that question because he's like, yeah, you are yelling at me. But normally, mm. I can't ask him that question. I'm like, Makai, when we talk, when when you're dealing with these emotions, you don't have to yell. Or, you know, this is how you can better communicate. Yeah. yeah. But, yes, you guys, so I feel like with some kids, you think that that harsh discipline will work, and it just won't. So everybody kind of has to figure out what works best for their own child. Yeah, I agree. I think... Um... Being on both ends, you know, being raised by my loving parents and being a parent, I will say that love is the key. Um, just a gentleness and love, that's the, I say it's the best way. Um, just just knowing that the discipline, the structure, the, uh, the overbearingness, it can be much. And I got to catch myself sometimes, you know, because sometimes I am over, I can be overbearing. And not, not for the most part, but sometimes, you know, I want certain things to happen, I can be overbearing. So it's like, you know, sometimes I'll catch myself and say, okay, with Kai, you know, apologize to him, I love you. Uh, but, you know, it's just that, find that balance of being firm and, you know, just allowing the child to grow and learn. And that's really it. Like, even with potty training, kind of had to know, you know, even if a child pees on herself or whatever, that's a part of the process. Right. It's all the process. They're growing and they're learning. Yeah. So it's a great... Like certain things we can shame our kids for, that's completely normal for kids. Like taking toys from other kids, that's kind of normal. Yeah, anything actually. 
Yeah, look, any little thing where mm. they are struggling with something, it's like it's a normal kid behavior because they trying to figure out what's okay, what's <laughs> not okay. A lot of things to them not okay. And you like, mm. to you, we have logical minds. They don't have logical <laughs> minds. So we're expecting a certain level of um, maturity from them that yeah, they don't have too yet. Fast. Yeah. So I think when it comes to disciplining, like one method that we use is just like, if you explain to your kid what you don't want them to do and they do it, you tell them what the consequences are going to be and you, you keep your word. If you yeah, say you're going to yeah. take something away, then you take it. Damn. If you say, all right, you're going to lose access to all your toys, not all your toys, but <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever you say, you keep your word. And that's kind of works for us. It's like, because mm. kids, they don't know when to stop. And sometimes you're like, okay, I asked you to stop. Why are you still doing that? And they still like they keep playing. And so sometimes you do have to be like, well, if you do that again, then this X, Y, Z is going to happen. So and then they'll have to face it. So I, I never, I rarely feel the need that he ever would ever need to get hit or anything like that. But yeah. like I said, each child has their own kind of behavior pattern. So mm. parents kind of just choose what's best, what they feel is best. Yeah. You got to know your child. And then, and then outside your home too. So if, you know, you're going to visit grandparents or aunts and uncles. And your child talks back to them. Oh, they yeah. do something, then they're like, yo, I'm about to get your kid. <laughs> you're like, yo, just relax. This could be their first interaction. And they have to learn right there. That's the learning point. Yeah, and you do have to teach your kids to be respectful of uh, their yeah. adults. So those are all good learning experiences. But it's just, I think it's important that you not lose your cool. Yeah. Because, like I said, when you're teaching a child, how can you teach a child if you're, oh, you're overly all in your emotions? <laughs> That yeah. doesn't really, that's not going to add it. Because, you know, honestly, they are already emotionally irrational. Sorry, you guys, I'm not looking at my hair. My hair's looking real lush right. today. It just takes a couple times. Even if they're four, five, six, seven, eight, it's going to take a few times to, like, really master it or know what's going on. So give the child time. Let them learn. You know, come into their own. <laughs> Right, you guys, so when I was younger, I was raised in a house where the discipline was harsh. I got beatings and everything. <laughs> Most people were like, well, you turned out fine, so I guess it wasn't so bad. But it's like, <laughs> yes, but when I think back on some moments where maybe communication was needed more so than just a physical lashing out, mm. I feel like that was a missed opportunity. Just if you, you, could, you could teach someone something other than just being angry and kind of hitting them. So, I mean, that's kind of basically what I feel like is the basis of gentle parenting is yeah. not not losing control of yourself just because you're angry about something that your kid does. Yeah, I feel like all of it goes into the child learning how to operate in the world. You know, when they're talking to friends, how are they going to argue or fight or just be calm? How would they respond to their world? I think the parents are the guides to show, hey, this is how I, this is how I react to you, this is how I react to others, and they can watch and be an example. Right. see the example. And I think kids should get the same respect that you would give anybody else. Now, I know people are <laughs> like, what? Kids don't need mm. respect? Because they're kids, and they don't know nothing. But, like, I, there were lots of times when I was younger where my I felt like my parent, <laughs> my dad, <laughs> he was just like, I'm the parent. I know what I'm talking Like, what I says go, basically. Like, you have you may have an opinion, but I ain't trying to hear it right now. <laughs> but, you know, then that, I think that can affect how the child views their own voice and how they, they view the value of their voice. So I think you want to make sure that the, the child knows that they're, what they feel has value yeah. and that sometimes, like, all they need to do is just talk about it. Talk, yeah. talk out your emotions. <laughs> Yes, it's long. It's the long way. It yeah. is the longer way because you gotta sit and have a conversation. You know, I think it's good for a child to challenge you in a respectful way. So I think a child should challenge just anything, question things, and come to you and say, "Hey, I got. I'm thinking about this, or you told me this, and I think it should have been this way." That's a good conversation to have. Um, it just it just grows their brain, just their emotional maturity. Just it works a lot on a lot of levels. <laughs> And I was going to say, some kids will challenge you in a disrespectful way. <laughs> but I think, like, yeah. say, for instance, Makai's having a fit yeah. in public. Mm. And I'm feeling embarrassed. <laughs> well, what the first thing I would do is just remove him from everybody's eyes. You know what I'm saying? And then you get down on their level and you look and say, okay, what's going on? Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, what? Why are you? What are you <laughs> feeling? Because I feel like, just like us, we don't. We already feel embarrassed. The kid, you don't want. Well, most kids I, I know would not want to be embarrassed in front of a bunch of strangers. So I feel like I always felt like that kind of discipline should happen just between you and your child. Like, mm -hmm. other people don't have to see me discipline my kid. I mean, but if they do, it would still be pretty much what I would consider respectful to the child. Mm -hmm. Basically, I have respect for my child. Like, yeah, you said you just said something that really bothered me, and I'm mad, but we gonna have this conversation in private and I'm gonna tell you that, listen, that's not okay in X, Y, Z, whatever, you know, however you want to talk to your child about why that behavior is not okay. And a lot of times you just gotta use logic and sometimes kids, yeah, I'm telling you, that's like one time um, Makai was having this whole fit while we were trying to cross the street. Mm -hmm. And like, obviously it's dangerous. So I'm sorry, I just had to pick him up and just <laughs> carry him. Even though he, he, he was upset, I think he wanted to press the little button. I see, yeah. But I think, I don't know, this is when we didn't have a car and I was trying to catch the bus. So mm. I just was like, we got to go now. So I just picked him up. Yeah. But he had a whole fit because he didn't get to do that one thing. So kids, they sometimes they're not even thinking about danger. Not they're yet. not thinking about that they're having a whole meltdown in the street. Yeah. So a lot of times you do have to take control. But at the end of the day, what I'm saying is that talk to them. Talk. I think that happened to me twice. Um, and I, what worked for us, or I know we started doing like forecasting. So I was like, okay, Makai, before we got to the street, we about to get to the street, cars coming, it can hurt you, hit you, the light's red and green, we gotta go through them green, we gotta go. So it's kind of talking to him before he even gets to the street, and he trying to play around and do do do. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of times some kids, they don't even realize the danger that they're in. Yeah. In those moments, you do have to be a little more just whatever it takes to make sure they stay safe. And sometimes yeah. that's not going to be gentle. It's not going to be... No, I'm dragging them across. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like whatever it takes to make sure they stay safe. But I think in a lot of moments, like in the house, or there are opportunities where you can just sit and talk but about it without it escalating to this whole battle. So that's what we've learned. And you still got to have some parents that's like... <laughs> I pop my kids and they fine. And I mean, maybe they are fine. I don't know. But I think if in general, we just talk to our kids. How did you feel about how you've been disciplined? Because if my dad asked me, I would have some things to say. Like, okay, I think I needed these beatings for these behaviors. <laughs> for these behaviors. But, um, yeah, because I mean, because really, I was watching this video by that guy, I think his name is Gabor Mate. Oh, yeah. And he was talking about how a lot of times what happens is the kid lashes out based off of their re response to their environment. So say mm -hmm. at home they're not getting like a lot of attention and love. Yeah. Or it's sometimes it's like factors within the house, factors within the relationship they have with the mom and the dad yeah. that causes them to kind of lash out. And I know to say, well, Makai, if we're not really... Uh, giving him the attention that he needs, he is Lash less. Out, yeah. um, I want to say I was gonna say obedient, but he's less uh, like likely to be compliant with some of the things. <laughs> like he's less easygoing. Like he's more. I don't know. I can't explain it, but it's like he'll be on edge, or he'll he'll want that attention. Yeah, That's and then he'll start doing random things to get that attention, and it's stuff. It's stuff is gonna irritate us. <laughs> so that's when we have to. Instead of just looking at him like, why is he acting like that? We really have to be like, okay, what about our whole environment lately that has changed that's causing him to act out in this way? That's true. Now, that's about, that's that's being conscious parents right there. Because you really got to be conscious about the whole environment. Yeah. Even if your environment is chaotic, like if just cluttered, that can make them all over the place. So, I mean, a lot of times we want to just blame the kid for their behavior. But you really got to look at mm -hmm. the whole picture. Of how they're living, how they're growing, how they're being affected by the lack of connection that might be happening in your own house. Mm. And I'm a, I'm guilty of that too. Shoot, you sitting there on the phone and your kid want to play with you. You're like, hey, I'm trying to watch this Instagram video. But then sometimes you've got to put things in perspective and be like, okay, I got to check myself too. Because we, we're still kind of growing and trying to make sure that we are just choosing what's best for our family. Yeah. yeah. More. Yeah, and we've been, during this time, been able to go out more. You know, I definitely love when we're in the park, off taking walks, yeah. just having fun. Or when we're just playing cards, or yeah, playing, like, little games, Scrabble. Yeah, that family time. Yeah. 
One other thing I want to talk about was labeling your kid bad based mm. off the different phases they go through. Like, Makai got sick one time, you guys. <laughs> And um, was... while he, because he felt so helpless and like that he needed us so much, <laughs> he would do this thing where he wouldn't talk. He would just like, mm, mm. he would just point at things. Now we already know he can talk. So we were just like, <laughs> I don't understand that. And that made him, it was like he went on to full on baby mode. And um, he would just keep making all this noise without actually using his words. Yeah. Now, this is a perfect example because because if somebody else would have saw Makai in that stage, they would have thought he was a bad kid. <laughs> but here's what we've learned. It's like, don't label your kid when they're just going through something or they're just going through a phase. Because if that's like, if I if I saw him going through that phase and I'm on the phone with my mom or my grandma and I'm like, Makai, he just been a bad kid and he been acting like this. And then now in my mind, I'm like, he's bad. But no, actually... He just went through something. He's not used to being, being down like and that, out yeah. like that. Yeah, he's not sure. used to being down and out and just feeling miserable. So it's like I had to stay positive and to know that that behavior wasn't going to be mm -hmm. become permanent. Yeah. So it's important that you allow, just allow your kid to have those phases because it's not, <laughs> well, it shouldn't be permanent. Yeah. Like it would have been weird if he would have started doing that and then just kept doing that forever. But it, it was important how we responded to it because, yeah. well, we weren't going to give into it. I'm like, let's, this is what we would do. We were like, okay, when you actually tell me, use your words, then I can I can get something for you. That was hard. But what I didn't want was to kind of jump back into giving him what he wants when he's just pointing at stuff. Yeah. And then after he's not sick no more, then he's like, that's going to be my norm. Nobody. I know you can talk. I know you can ask for what you want. <laughs> So sometimes you you do have to just don't label them. Just know that I'm telling you, you catch a kid on the wrong day, you're going to be like, dang, that kid is bad. But really, they could just be having a moment, a phase. They could be going through something. Kids go through stuff. They go, yeah, just roll with it. And also, one other thing that affects kids' behavior is sugar, yeah. the food you, you're giving them. And a lot of times, parents aren't conscious of that because they're just so... If it's in their diet, they probably wouldn't even yeah. recognize it. So, yeah, so that. most parents, even what they grow up with, you know, if they grew up on hugs and chips and candy, that's what the kids get. The little juice hugs. Little, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm dating myself, but the little juice hugs. I mean, Capri Sun. Everybody know about Capri Suns. Yeah. Um, Twix. What, Twix? All the, all all the candy. Snickers, hog mocks. Like <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that'll make your kid jump off the wall. Then you're going to be like, why is you so hype? Sit down somewhere. <laughs> but it's like, well, you did just give him a bunch of candy, so I don't yeah. know what you're expecting. Yeah. So I think it's interesting. We still got to just watch all those things and make sure that we're not judging them too harshly. That's yeah. been our thing. Don't judge a kid too harshly. And now, also, we had a little instance where what? we were friends... We were having like a little play date and we felt like we didn't want Makai to be judged too harshly for things that we felt were not that serious. So yeah. you could clash with parents because yeah. they might think that it is serious and y'all might be like, well, but when if we do that at <laughs> home, it's not that big of a deal. So then you got to you got to address that when it comes up. Yeah. So I think as parents, you know, if it's two of y'all, you know, definitely be on the same page. And even so, just a little bit on the food, you know, we give Makai fruits and vegetables, right? candy once in a while. You know, so if he's out... Hardly ever. Uh, yeah, if he's out, somebody said, can he have this candy? We'll either say no or we'll take it. And like, uh, yeah, because sometimes <laughs> our neighbors will be like, oh, here you go. He gave us some cookies for Makai. And I'm like, you don't want to be like, no thanks. <laughs> so we'll take it, but we won't eat it. Yes. Yeah. Just... And we don't we don't deprive him either. Like, he gets ice cream once in a while. Yeah. We let him try things. But it's cool, though, because it's like his idea of a snack is like carrots and celery sticks. So, Grapes, But that's because pear. we snack on that, too. Yeah. So I think you got to have healthy habits and then your kid will think that it's cool too. Like if I yeah. get excited about some carrots and hummus, <laughs> guess who else is getting excited about carrots and hummus? Makai. So yeah, guacamole. It's Really, it's about setting an example. So yeah. I hope that this video was really... Let us know. What you guys <laughs> think? Like how has being a parent been for you guys? And yeah. what what have you learned when, you, when it comes to your discipline journey? Let because we're all out here figuring it out. We don't know everything. Man. But, um, I mean, I do like to respect other parents' ability to just 
choose what's best for their child. And sometimes yeah. that could be different from what we decide. That's yeah. okay. We're not here to do all the same stuff. <laughs> all right, you guys. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this chat. Yeah. And we will see you guys in the next episode. Let me know if there's any other topics you guys want us to discuss. All right. Love you guys. Peace. Peace. Shout out to my baby. She been working hard. We were supposed to do a big show. And she made these incredible earrings. <laughs> Definitely go check out Bohemian Afro. Mark, for a second, that was amazing. Oh, that is so sweet. Thank you. Yeah, I was just looking at them, and um, yeah, we 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 made like a thousand pieces. <laughs> well, we were getting yeah, we were getting ready for a big show, and then yeah. the show didn't happen. But and it was gonna be the biggest show ever for us. Fifty twenty thousand people, big show. Yeah. Um, but we made an online course. You know, you got your products. Got Shout out to Ashe. Got some oh, yeah. lip colors on that's all natural. Go check out Melanated Natural Lipstick. Right, you guys. Also, um, I think we want to sing a little song. And I had in mind, oh my gosh, we said we was going to sing the Lean On Me song. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fair inside. <clears throat> by the side. By the And always. Pray that name, pray that, that name. name. Why is my voice so high pitched? <clears throat> Alright, now let's do something else. Not. Guys, we know this song, but we need the lyrics. <laughs> We've heard this song before, but like, we didn't know the heart. Okay. <clears throat> Bear with us. Love you, baby. When I wake up in the morning, love, yeah. and the sunlight hurts my eyes, and something without warning, love. Bears heavy on my mind. Then I look at you, and the world's all right with me. <laughs> Just one look at you, and I know it's gonna be a lovely day. A lovely day. Lovely day. day. You're supposed to hold that one. Oh, my <laughs> bad. Well, you guys get the gist. That's a beautiful song. Rest in peace to Bill Withers. Lovely day. Lovely day. That was Lovely Day it by was. Kashira and Mark Savage. I agree. All right, you guys. Peace. Thanks for tuning in. Look the ticket because I miss it. Got me wishing I